Hey, welcome back to Teal Crow's Homestead. Shelly here, and um, I am out at my friend Mike's place, his homestead, and he is going to show me, teach me, how to process bunnies. So come along with us. So I've brought um, three of our rabbits and one rabbit, you can kind of see a little gray guy right there, that a friend gave to us. And this is what we're going to process today. I have two Silver Fox does and then this buck right here. And I just found out on the drive over here that that's a buck because he's been trying to mount these girls all the way out here. I didn't realize that was a buck. <laughs> My friend told me it was a doe, so, but he is not. All right, so today we are processing rabbits. Um, this is... I have no idea what this thing is called. Um, I'm just going to call it a rabbit dispatcher. But I ordered this from Rabbitat Homestead. They have an Etsy channel. And so Mike just mounted this on his board out here. And then there's a little gambrel that he made. This is pretty cool. I may have to get him to make me one of these. <laughs> and um, so once we dispatch the rabbit there, we'll hang it up here. And um, I think we're going to, aren't we going to try a couple different ways of dispatching? We can to see what over what works guy. best since i've never done this before and um i think mike has only what done like rabbits that you've hunted yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um we're going to try a couple different things and see how that goes okay so i'm not showing <clears throat> the killing process on youtube but um so we've got him hung up in the gambrel and um we cut his throat and he's bleeding out All right, so Mike is um, removing the fur. I cut around each one of the hawks and pulled the fur back. And now he's taking it off. If I'm not mistaken, that should just like come off like a suit, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Super easy. What fat is on this thing? Yeah, you know, it's funny that people think that you know rabbits are all fluffy and everything, and they think that they're fat and they have like the least amount of fat of any animal. Very lean meat on a rabbit. So now he's opening up the body cavity so we can pull the organs out. Oh, I don't know. His liver looks good.
sadece kanya. Hey everybody. So it's been two days since um, I went to Mike's and got the rabbits processed. And um, I brought them all home in these Ziploc bags. So uh, there was four rabbits that we took and um, two bucks and two does. And um, I packed them all on ice and brought them home and stuck them in the fridge. And I didn't get them, I wanted to repackage them to put them in the freezer. And I didn't get that done because last night Randy and I went to go see um, The Sound of Freedom. And if you haven't seen that movie, you need to go see that movie. Um, I may talk more on that later. But, um, so right now, I'm weighing these and taking the um, pieces out. And I am making sure that everything's cleaned up. This one I found a gland that I'm going to cut out. Um, I'm making sure that everything is cleaned up and then I'm packaging them the way that I want to freeze them, like putting all the legs together and all the saddles together and all that kind of thing. Um, so <laughs> I didn't film a lot of the processing. You saw that a little bit ago. Um, let me explain that. So I, um, Y'all, I, I struggled with this big time. Um, this is not, and, and I don't, I, I, I don't know why I struggled. Um, now don't get me wrong. I don't enjoy killing anything. I, I don't. Um, I'm so very thankful for these animals and, um, the sacrifice that they give us to provide for our family. Um, and you know, that's part of homesteading life. That's their purpose is to provide for our family. And, but even, you know, when you have to do that, um, when you have to process the animals, it's hard. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's awesome to be able to put that food into your freezer but um it's just not an easy thing to do and as much as i encourage people to um be in control of their own food and even as far as like not going to a processor and doing all of that stuff on their own and getting you know their meat and knowing what is their animals are fed and all of that kind of stuff as much as i encourage that it's still <sighs> one of the hardest things that we do on the homestead. Um, so I went to Mike, he processed the first one and did an excellent job. And um, then it came time for, I was gonna process the next one. And I guess when I say process, I mean dispatch it. Um, really processing means the whole thing, you know, dispatching and um, butchering and all of that stuff but um, so I was going to dispatch the next one I could not do it and I don't really know why except for the fact that I'm not really into killing things I mean it I don't I don't know um, maybe it's that rabbits are so darn cute and I think pigs are cute too. Um, maybe I should have bought rabbits that are those white ones with the beady red eyes or whatever. Um, I think they're called they're Californians or something like that. Maybe I should have done that. Maybe that would have been easier because those the red eyed rabbits kind of freak me out a little bit. Um, but maybe that would have been easier if I had purchased those. But we have silver foxes and we act they're beautiful rabbits i don't know i don't know if that's the, the what's messing me up i have no idea but i couldn't do it um 
so Mike dispatched all of the rabbits and um, and skinned them and gutted them and um, brought them to me and then I cleaned them and everything and um, pieced them out the way that I wanted and packed them up in a bag and brought them home. Um, that was hard. Now, I don't know. I mean, when I kind of, you know, froze there and wasn't able to do that, I thought, how can I raise rabbits if I can't even, you know, go through the ordeal of processing them or whatever. And um, I was kind of second guessing whether or not I would even do that. Well, and Mike being the great guy that he is, he's like, I can come to your place and dispatch them for you. And, um, you know, like when we have a batch to dispatch, and, um, you know, we can do that. And that may be what I do, because I do still want to continue to raise rabbits for me and do that. But I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was hard. Um, it was a little traumatic. And, um, if you're new getting into homesteading and this is your goal, you really got to think about this. You know, if you've got rabbits that you're raising for meat, you need to think about how they're going to get to that step. And maybe it's not a thing. Maybe it's not a big deal. And I really don't feel like, I mean, I could be wrong. I've never actually went rabbit hunting and I could be wrong, but, um, I think it's a whole different thing, you know, hunting rabbit and shooting them with a gun or a shotgun or whatever, and then going and getting the carcass and cleaning it and everything for meat. That's a whole different thing than having this rabbit that you raised and, um, you know, having to get rid of it. And, uh, it's just hard. So... Yeah, be thinking about that. Even, I don't really have a, a hard time dispatching chickens. That doesn't really bother me. And I love my chickens. It's not like, you know, I don't like the animal or something like that. I do. Um, but, uh, for some reason, doing the chickens doesn't really tear me up, I guess. Um, But it's just, it's just something to think about. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're doing this. This whole ordeal with the rabbits has really been, I haven't, um, I haven't shared a lot about them because there's some things that, that I did wrong. There's some things that I did right. Um, as I'm always saying, our homestead is a big learning experience. And I think a lot of homesteading is. We lost some of our rabbits that were in the original litters or kindles or whatever they're called that were born last November. And um, so this go around, we're gonna do some things differently. Um, for one, I don't. I think I'm gonna turn my rabbit tractor into um, just to grow out cages and make it stationary. Um, I think we're gonna do that. And I don't know. I don't know that I will breed them at the same time like I did last time, because that ended up being a lot of rabbits. So yeah, there's just some things that we're gonna do a little bit differently. Um, And, you know, you can get a lot of information from YouTube University or whatever, but um, really there's no better teacher than getting out there and doing it and making the mistakes and trial and error and all of that kind of thing. And um, it just takes a little bit of experience to make it happen. But, so anyways, I'm piecing these rabbits out. I've pieced them out. I, 
um, I cut the, so we cut them, we cut the front legs off and then the hind legs off, kind of quartered them out. And then the saddle part of it, we, um, we cut at the bottom of the rib cage and kept the, you know, like the lower abdomen part where the, um, belly flaps are. And then we, um, have the rib cage. So basically what I'm doing is, um, that saddle part, I'm packaging all of them together. The legs, I'm packaging all of them together. And um, and then the rib cage area, there's, there's some meat on there, but not a lot of meat. It's not something that looks like it would be easy to like get meat off of or whatever, but you can cook up rabbit bones and make broth just like you can with chicken bones. So I think what I'm gonna do is throw all of those rib cages in my cooker together and let them cook, let the meat fall off the bones, um, strain the meat out, and um, probably freeze that and use it in soups or, you know, like a rabbit pot pie or something like that. And, um, and then uh, use the bones to make bone broth. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, let, let me show you something though. The two doughs that I took over there, there's a dough each in these bags. One dough. Isn't that not crazy? They were big rabbits. Um, and they were only, they were like, well, I mean, they were born at Thanksgiving. So what is that? Um, May would have been six months. So seven and a half months, I guess. So one of them weighed four pounds, seven ounces. And the biggest one weighed five pounds, seven and a half ounces. Let me write that on my board up here. So all together for those seven, no, those, my brain is fried right now, I'm sorry. All together for those four rabbits, we had, let's see, nine, 21, 23, so that's seven, Harry, eight, 17, 17 pounds and seven ounces. 17 pounds and seven ounces of rabbit meat out of four rabbits. And as far as meals, I mean, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're looking at seven meals out of that. Does that sound about right for me, Randy and Crystal? That's pretty good, right? So, yeah, I'm gonna finish packaging these up. And um, I just encourage you, and I'm not trying to discourage you from homesteading, but there's a lot that goes into it. And not only that, if you're getting into this, it's, it's a good thing to wanna know where your food comes from, right? If you're getting into this, just be mindful of these things. Um, so one of the benefits of this is, yes, I know I raised these rabbits. I know what they ate. I know where they came from, all those things. Um, but um, the place where I'm struggling at, I'm glad that there's community um, that we can reach out to that will help us with these types of things. Mike and his wife were absolutely um, wonderful Sunday. They took me, I had never been to their place before. They live completely off grid. Um, they have a rain catchment water system and then um, they have solar panels and they did all of that. Like they, um, Mike installed all of that. 
um his wife Jeanette has made this cute little home um it's it's just I don't know I'm kind of envious because they're just out um in the middle of the woods and it's quiet and peaceful and just beautiful and yeah so kudos to them for figuring that out and doing all those things um and i'm thankful that i'm in the same community with them they're good people thank you mike and jeanette for your help i greatly appreciate you all um so yeah just if you have any questions about stuff like that just ask um you can ask down in the chat or whatever comment down there um it's a good thing to build community. It's a good thing to have people around you that you can learn from and that can help you through things that maybe you're not good at. Maybe someday I will be cool with it. Maybe, I mean, I know 100% for certain that if it came down to me having to feed my family, I would be able to dispatch a rabbit. I wouldn't have any problem with it. Um, well, I, I may have a little bit of a problem with it, but again, I would be able to do it. But I guess it's because that I don't have that super immediate need right now that, you know. So anyway, um, dog on. Look at the saddle on the sucker. Like this is not even, here's the belly flaps. This is the backbone, all that meat right there. This is not even the rib cage. This is the bottom of the rib cage. That was a big rabbit. The other thing I want to talk to you about is uh, the festival. So our festival, the Kentucky Sustainable Living um, Homesteading and Preparedness Festival is October. I need to put this in a separate bag. It's October 28th and 29th in Bowling Green, Kentucky at the Ag Expo Center in Bowling Green, WKU Ag Expo Center. We've got some amazing speakers lined up to come and teach and speak and share and all of those things. But the one thing that I really want to um, tell you about because of the movie that I went and saw last night is the uh, benefit dinner. We're having a benefit dinner to all the proceeds. All of the proceeds go to benefit Vets for Child Rescue. Vets for Child Rescue is an organization. You can um, Google them. It's Their website is vets, V-E-T-S, the number four, childrescue. I think it might be .com, but it may be .org. Um, but this was an organization started by Craig Sawyer, who was in SEAL Team 6, and um, seen a lot of things, experienced a lot of things, and when he got out of the military, he started Vets for Child Rescue to rescue children from sex trafficking. Um, the movie, Sound of Freedom, is, um, it was actually, for what the movie was about, it was, what am I trying to say, very I guess tastefully done. You didn't see any, um, there was some fighting and stuff like that, but you didn't see any super horrible stuff. Graphic stuff, I guess is the word I'm looking for. You didn't see that, which I was thankful for. Um, but everyone needs to see this movie. Everyone needs to see this movie. It is unbelievable that um i can't remember what the number is but the like the sex trafficking child sex trafficking has surpassed drug trafficking um guns you know running guns or whatever it's surpassed all of that and i can't remember the exact number but it is in the multiple billions of dollars that this industry is worth and Apparently, there's a lot of people involved in this industry that are 
um, not into letting it go away or correcting the situation. There are millions of children across the world that are trapped in this life, this horrible, despicable thing. You need to go see the movie. It's unbelievable that the rights to this movie was actually purchased by Disney and they would not release it. They've been trying to get it released. The people who made the movie have been trying to get it released for um, five years now. It's been ready to be released for five years. And then this um, organization or company called Angel Productions purchased the rights to this movie from Disney and um, they released it. And they have even, they've had problems getting, um, just getting it marketed so people would know that, it, that it's out there. I mean, how messed up is that? Um, so, go see the movie. Everyone needs to see the movie. Um, but I will say this. You, as a society, we're being made aware that this happens. I think that we were pretty much all made aware that this happens back when um, the whole Epstein thing broke out. And, you know, we know that, that this goes on. And, I mean, it kind of brought light to that. But then, I mean, here we are however many years later... And we don't even know who his clients were. Somebody knows who his clients were. <laughs> Somebody knows. But, um, you know, a lot of prominent people have been um, exposed in that. But there's still nothing that's really happened to them, right? I mean, his girlfriend or whatever went to jail. And she very well may get... Um, taken care of. Who knows? But you need to go see the movie. And the more that this is brought to the light, the more it then makes us responsible. Right? Now that we know, we can't turn a blind, turn a blind eye to it. And act like it's not happening. Because it is happening. Um, we have to do something about it. So, back to the festival. On um, Saturday night, we're having our benefit dinner. Um, it is $250 a person. 200 of that... Um, Go. Well, I don't know what that was, but it sounded like a big gunshot. But I do live out in the country, so. Um, but anyways, $200, $200 of that goes toward Vets for Child Rescue. And um, 50 of it will go to pay for the event. And um, so what you get for that, when you support that, um, you'll get to have dinner with all of our speakers including um, the likes of Billy Bond from Perm and Pasture Farm, um, Greg Brand, um, Aaron T. Scott, um, Darren uh, Strong from Hacks for the Homesteader, um, Grumpy Acres will be there. You'll get to have dinner with them. There's all kinds of people. Um, so you'll get to sit down and have dinner with them. You can talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, ask them questions, pick their brain, all of that kind of stuff. But most importantly, you'll be um, supporting our mission to raise $10,000 to pay for an operation. That's the average cost of a sting operation for Vets for Child Rescue, where they go in and they catch pedophiles 
and help put them away. They work with law enforcement to do that. And then they also have um, safe houses set up for victims that they find that they rescue and help get um, counseling and, and protection and all of those things. So you'll be helping to make that happen. Go watch the movie and then go buy your ticket to the dinner. Um, maybe you don't want, maybe you don't want to um, come to the dinner, but you want to make um, a donation to Vets for Child Rescue. There's a way on their website to do that. I highly encourage you to do that. Um, or if you want to go on our website for the festival, um, KentuckySustainableLiving.com, and you click on the picture of the Vets for Child Rescue icon, which is like a falcon head, I think, but it says V4CR. If you click on that, it will take you to a page where you can buy a ticket, or you can just make a donation. If you want to donate five bucks, two bucks, ten bucks, whatever, um, that money will go directly to Vets for Child Rescue. And, um, and every bit of it will even so so when you purchase something from our um through our website we you know we have to pay fees because we use um a credit card processing thing to do that and there's fees that it charges us but every bit of the money so like if you donate ten dollars um to vets for child rescue and they only give us, say, nine fifty of it because they charge us $0.50 cents processing fee. $10 of it will still go for Vets for Child Rescue. Um, Jason, Jake, and I will cover the cost of whatever those fees are. And every bit of the money that you donate will go directly to Vets for Child Rescue. So, I highly recommend that you go see Sound of Freedom. I highly recommend that you come and join us at the festival and grab you a ticket so you can hang out at the dinner. And, um, good Lord, just pray for these kids. Just pray for them. And I'm even going to say, you know what? The people that are involved in this, the despicable people that are involved in this, pray for them too. I know that I serve an awesome God. I know that I serve an all-powerful God. And he has overcome evil already. And just like the movie says, God's children are not for sale. So join us October 28th and 29th at the Ag Expo Center in Bowling Green. And um, come hang out with us. Enjoy the festival. I don't mean to get all emotional. That movie just kind of wrecked me. So, um, also go check out Vets for Child Rescue made a documentary movie called Contra Land. If you go to their website or if you go, if you, um, do the search engine on YouTube, if you type in Contra Land, so instead of Contraband, it's Contra Land, type that in and you can go watch their movie that they made and, um, it just... It's a documentary of work that um, Craig Sawyer has done with Vets for Child Rescue that his team has done. Go check it out. It's powerful stuff. Um, so anyways, this uh, rabbit processing video took a crazy turn, didn't it? <laughs> anyways, I hope y'all have a um, wonderful rest of your week. And God bless y'all. And yeah, let's go see the movie. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, God bless you. Have a great day.